Just a disclaimer, my voice is f***ed up because it's sore. Sorry in advance, bitch. The target has disappeared. I can detect no sign of vital activity. You mean that everyone is dead? That is correct. Good work, sir. Hideo Kojima, the voice of a gaming generation. The guy who made cardboard boxes Mr. Box. a legitimate stealth technique. Mostly, he made you go outside and get some sunlight so you can charge your game pack to make your character stronger. He made a game that divided the gaming community and looked good while doing it. He's done it all and still going strong. But one thing he did that was unnoticed by the mainstream population is a game he produced that involved the one thing that anime fans cream their jeans over. Giant robots. Enter Zone of the Ender, a high-speed mech game with one of the sexiest killer robots you've ever seen. And it has a giant cock uh, pit uh, attached to the crotch area. While most mech suits move around awkwardly and make loud stomping noises, Kojima Productions made an eco-friendly Tesla version. Quiet, sleek, and quick as a Karen, asking for the Olive Garden manager when her salad has one too many spinach leaves. However, Kojima was only the producer of this experimental project that didn't feature a sexy, headband-wearing stealth boy. I'm dummy thick. Kojima was too busy with Metal Gear Solid 2 at the time, so he had some other boys from Konami craft this ambitious package. And let me tell you, the two mainline games are still pretty unique, even by today's standards. I've never seen any other developer attempt to make a game with this kind of high-speed robot action. So why the f*** has nobody tried? Well, the problem is the majority gaming population doesn't know these games exist. And that's a damn shame, because the second game is really f***ing good. The first game? It's... uh... lacking. <coughs> the first game is a really cool idea. Playing as a mech that flies in the air and cuts down enemies with a laser sword should be a winning formula. I mean, Hideo Kojima is involved for tit's sake. But while the idea itself is badass, the gameplay, story, and pacing is, um, half-assed. Almost meeting its potential, but running out of fuel before the finish line. But let's see what kind of legs this robo bitch is standing on. Uh, not that one. That's a huge bitch. So our story focuses on a teenage boy named Leo Steinbuck. Yes, that's his real name. Leo lives in a colony near Jupiter named Antilla. His life seems normal until an extremist military group named Barum attacks. Leo's friends are in danger, so it's up to him to be a hero. After establishing himself as a little bitch, Leo falls into the cock pit of Jehuti, an advanced mech suit known as an orbital frame with its own personal Siri named Ada. I don't know what that stands for, but it's, it's Ada. This baby is sleek and stylish, and it glides through the air with grace and a giant cock pit. Okay, okay, I'll stop mentioning where the cock pit is placed. The jokes wrecked themselves. I mean, look at where this thing is placed. Just look at it. What were they thinking? Anyways, Leo gets his first taste of combat. It's time for him to man up and take on his first real opponent, Viola, a crazy, death-seeking officer of Barum. Uh, why is he screaming? Why is he screaming? He's kicking this chick's ass and he's screaming. Stop screaming! Yeah, Leo's kind of a pussy, as he has the one weapon to save his colony, and he's like, No, I don't want to. 
Listen. No, you listen. I could get attacked again. Granted, he is a kid. And the guy who was supposed to pilot the mech is probably dead. But this is top of the line technology that can decimate anything without effort. And you're just gonna be like... I suppose you want me to kill again. Well... I want nothing more to do with any of you. Go kill or whatever you want. Just leave me out of it. A woman named Elena Weinberg promises him cash money if he can get that mech to the transport vessel Atlantis. There, they can take it to Mars and crush the Barm forces. Leo agrees, but his one condition is that he gets to be a giant booty on the way there. But I want you to remember one thing. I will never help you kill anybody. Maybe killing is alright for you people, but it's not with me. I understand. As Leo and Ada go questing to make Jehuti stronger, he picks up his friend and painfully obvious love interest, Selvis. Yes, that's her real name. And fights several Barum boys along the way. And Barum boys are causing all kinds of trouble. Nothing really important happens in the story until Viola challenges you to a rematch. And you kick her stupid suicide ass again. What a useless bitch. You meet up with Rock Thunderheart. Which is the only cheesy name in this game that I can appreciate. And then Viola comes back and shoots Selvis. Whoa, what a bitch. It's time for third round against this thunder bitch. And she gets blown out of the ring. And she tells Leo not to be a chivalrous idiot and let her die. As she tells her to sob story while floating away. I have lost everything. I survived many battles. I lost my parents and my lover. I killed innocent children and even my comrades to save myself. Soaking in their blood and eating their flesh, I managed to live this long. Time to end it. Finally, I am finished. How tragic. See you in the sequel, bitch. Then the big man in charge of Barham, No Man, uh, close enough, has obtained the other powerful orbital frame on Antela, Anubis. This is it. This is the big final boss. The epic fight between two ultra high tech. It's impossible for you to kill me. Whoa! Main torque bus in the body is damaged. Superiority index has dropped to minus 99.83. I was so close! Uh, never mind. I guess Noman's years of combat experience against a kid taking a joyride was not the best matchup for a fight. Anyways, the real reason Jehuti is being taken on Mars is because she's a nuke and will blow up at Barm headquarters. Jehuti's duty on Mars is to penetrate the military fortress Alman and to destroy the fortress from the inside by self-destructing Jehuti. Jehuti will self-destruct? So it's a suicide mission? I thought it was you who told me not to waste my life! Pressurization is complete. Opening the hatch. Thank you. Ada! This is what I live for. This is the purpose of living. For those who have no life. No! Oh wow, what, what a twist. Oh, and, and selfies is okay. Whatever. I, I guess everything is gonna be deja vu until the sequel. Yeah. This story is pretty basic. It shows an interesting world, but doesn't build upon it too well. In fact, the most important pieces of lore are found in the game's manual and in the anime OVA, Zoni Enders 2167 Idolo. Try saying that three times fast. Having this type of information outside of the game is actually fine in an NES game. If you're going to attempt to establish characters' environments with long cutscenes and lots of dialogue, 
at least have a cutscene or data log somewhere in the actual game that explains why Barum is attacking this poor little colony for two Futamex. But even though I know the backstory to this game, it still isn't too compelling when you follow an annoying, pussy <coughs> ass protagonist and a weak supporting cast that I couldn't care less about. Plus, the main villain is this shadowy figure that doesn't fully establish why he wants to go all Che Guevara on the authorities that run the solar system. Noman is more established in the sequel, but he's just a faceless terrorist in this game. The story is pretty lacking, but can the gameplay redeem this concept? Uh, kinda? The gameplay has some pretty cool ideas and wants to show off, but doesn't show them off well. It's like showing your complete Power Rangers collection for show and tell, but you kept them on the box just for everyone to look at and not show the sick Mechazord morph that will make kids <coughs> their pants off the normal schedule. Instead, they look in disappointment as some douchey rich kid is showing off a bunch of toys in the box your parents can never afford. JOT controls well. It has a rapid projectile attack when distanced from enemies and an armed sword when you get up close both being tied to the same button. And, and trust me, that's a good thing. Just trust me. There's a dash, a lock-on, a charge attack, and a grab, which all give combat variety and versatility. However, the grab isn't as smooth as all those other features I mentioned. When you grab an enemy, it switches to this back-facing angle where you slowly aim where you launch the robot you grabbed. The only enemy that seems useful to grab are these big shield guys since they block enemy fire. But it's quicker to dodge enemy fire than waste time grabbing these fat fucks. The grab is useless. Another thing that is also useless is the majority of these sub-weapons that you collect throughout the colony. The one I found pretty useful was Comet, a Hadouken blast that wrecks robot ass. I didn't mean that to rhyme. That can't be said for the rest of these so-called weapons. These sub-weapons range from pea shooters, pebble tossers, and paper planes. Just, just look at this. <laughs> seriously? And don't get me started on the sniper, a weapon you use once to shoot these small targets on this reactor, and then you never use it again because it's about as useful as throwing a tampon into the ocean. Why are these quote-unquote weapons so useless? Speaking of useless, three of the bosses in this game rely on tedious tactics to try and end you. While I did die a few times because I'm not the elite gamer I think I am, these bosses are a disgrace to the group they serve. And Leo's still a <coughs> for not finishing off while they're down. I mean, come on, man, just <coughs> do it. Just <coughs> kill them. It's, it's not that hard. Come on. Shut up! I refuse to destroy The only good boss you fight is that psycho <coughs> bitch Viola. Since she has a death wish, I might as well grant it. And she drives a hard bargain, since her mech has similar combat capabilities. But, you know, I kicked her ass three times, so pretty inferior. Also, Anubis is the biggest <coughs> tease in this entire game! Almost like they wanted to have a real fight for the sequel, which was not even confirmed yet! Way to think ahead, Kojima, you crazy bastard! A major part of the game involves saving settlements in the colony from enemies, and there's no real variety in these other than introducing new enemies that are limited in variety themselves. When you fail to save some hostages, horrifying screams are heard, and it makes you feel awful. <laughs> but it's okay, because Leo let his friends die anyways. So why not a few more? Ooh, jeez. There's actually a bad ending you can lock if you kill every survivor in this game. But uh, I couldn't get the trigger. So here's some other schmucks footage of it. Testing, testing. Leo, this is Thunderheart. Can you hear me? What's going on? I have confirmed Thunderheart's death. What? Dead? There was a large underground explosion in the colony block. The vital signs I had been monitoring have disappeared. But why? What happened? 
Jehuti fired at the colony block and hit one of the underground lifelines. In other words, you killed him. But I didn't mean... Are you happy now? I was just playing. No, guys. I'm, I'm pretty sad. Sad because this game should have been an amazing example of ass-kicking robots. Instead, it's just a painfully average experiment that wasn't given the time it deserved to be crafted into at least an above average game. Th at least I wanted that. However, there are a few things that are pretty good in this game. Like I mentioned before, Jehudi controls very well, as the fluent movement makes the combat tolerable through the 4 hour campaign. <laughs> The graphics look amazing for a PS2 game from 2001, even though I'm showing PS3 footage, but whatever, f*** you. Probably because it runs on the same engine as Metal Gear Solid 2. But I'm not 100% sure on that, so don't quote me on it or I'll, I'll find you and I'll, 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 I'll cut you. I'm, I'm just kidding. YouTube, I'm, I'm just kidding, okay? Don't, don't take it personal. But I'm dummy dick. The voice acting is weak. Go kill her! Whatever you want, just leave me out of it. But the sound design is done very well. We will hold battle position. Speaking of sound, the music might be the best part of this entire game. feel like a graceful cyberpunk mech with a giant cockpit. Okay, I'm sorry, sorry. Last one, I swear. I won't do it again. Maybe. Oh, no, 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 I won't do it. There's a nice transition between cutscenes and gameplay, and the game's presentation makes the whole package feel like a Kojima production. Even the scenes with really long dialogue. In fact, this game feels like there's more cutscene than gameplay just like a Kojima production. There's also stuff you unlock after you beat the game, such as a versus mode to fight with your friends. If I had any that would, just like a Kojima production. To conclude, this game is disappointing. And its sequel, Zone of the Enders the Second Runner, can only go up from here. I, I hope, please, don't let me down Kojima. I know you're just a producer, but still, don't fucking let me down. We'll take a look at that game in the next little video series that I really don't have a title for. But there is one question I always ask. Does this game have anime titties? Damn! This way is completely restrained. There is no way out. Damn! Oh my! Hey guys, thanks for watching. Um, if you didn't like it, fuck you. No, I'm just kidding. But if if you if you have any suggestions for me to do anything, like this is kind of a new series I'm working on. The previous series I kind of kind of it didn't jive with me, and I thought to do more of like a free flow comedic approach. But hey, just give me anything, any like constructive criticism in the comments, and I'll totally look at it. Thank you for supporting me in these new weird adventures. Will this will this series die two episodes after? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. Um, uh, have, a, have a good day. And um, uh, food is for life. <laughs>